Hi, welcome to Learn and Flutter. And today we are in section five, part five, and we're looking at the drawer widget. So what exactly is the drawer widget? Well, let me jog your memory about what our layout we sort of come, came up with for a mobile, you know, small space um, device might look like, and then we can see where the drawer widget fits in. So remember at the beginning, we took a typical web application layout with a header and footer and all this other stuff, site navigation, and we squish it down into a mobile um, layout. And we said, okay, let's say you have a small screen and this is the area you have to deal with. Then of course, you're gonna have like a title there and then your body and then in your title, you might put some, you know, a uh, button for some to enable either navigation or taking some action. And you can, of course, put buttons on both sides. And we have seen that with the scaffold and widget, we can have this basic layout where we have a header, app bar, uh, we have body, and we have bottom bar. And we went through some of that already, and we saw how you could put leading, which would be the button up in the top in the header on the left-hand side, and then actions, which would be a list of buttons, for example, or widgets that you could put on the right-hand side. And we also saw that oh, in the bottom navigation, or whatever you want to call it, you can put even more button. And whether you use that for navigation or just take an action on the item that you're displaying in the body, that's completely up to you. And there are several ways we have floating action button, button that we've covered, the fab. And so now we want to talk about the drawer. So where's the drawer? Well, we also said that so using this like menu button here at the top left, you can do like a navigation that slides in and you can slide it in from the left or the right. Now, it doesn't have to be navigation. Let's say on my page here or a screen, I was actually showing information about user or a building or something. And I, the user probably tap a button at the bottom to see details. And so I didn't want to put all the information that they don't always use on the screen, you know, to overwhelm them but I stick some on this side um, screen, that could be my side, um, my drawer, that if they want to see the detail, I slide out that drawer. And so you could think of it like a drawer in a kitchen or something, you slide out and there's more things in there. And most of the time it's hidden. And that could be detail or it could be navigation to go to other parts of my application. So while I use nav here, I want you to know how you're free to put whatever you want there. And then of course, you can take away that um, drawer and then they're back to seeing whatever you have on the main screen. All right, so let's now jump in to see how we can do this with what we know in material layout and actually using scaffold. Scaffold give us all this, not only the head of the body and bottom net, but also bottom navigation, but also that drawer. Before we get to the code, let me just show you the documentation. Remember, that all this stuff is available on the Flutter website. So flutter.dev. And if you go over to docs and then widget catalog, and then you scroll down to material component. And if you look, you'll see here is actually a drawer, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. And since we're working with scaffolding, if you scroll down a bit past a few of the examples and you look at some of the properties that you can pass to the scaffolding widgets, and they show you some here. We use app bar, like I said before, bottom app bar. We did the fab, um, which is which is what we did in the previous video. We show how you can have it um, have a notch and cut out in the bottom navigator. Today we're gonna do the draw, and we talk about this already, and we show animation with what this looks like. So I just wanted to point you to the documentation so you can find additional information. All right. Now let's jump into the code. So here I am on my command line. I already have my simulator up and running. And if you haven't done so before, just want to remind you that do run Flutter upgrade. And if you do it in the project directory, then it's upgrading that project. But if you do it outside of a project directory, like where I'm at now, it upgrades your Flutter installation. So you definitely want to upgrade your Flutter installation and of course upgrade the project too. So if I do LS, we see it all, we have our four projects. I'm going to copy the last one we were working on and do copy recursively and part four. And then I'm going to call it part five underscore drawer widget. And I press enter and that copies for me. And just in case I want to do any kind of cleanup or anything, I can go in here and I can do flutter clean just to make sure 
you know, I don't, I'm not carrying around too much old code. And if you want to save space in your computer, because these flutter builds can take up um, quite a bit of space as I demonstrated a while back. All right. Now I can say run flutter upgrade in just that project directory at a minimum. If you run it outside, all it's going to do is apply to any new project you create. But since we're using project, you probably want to keep updating those. Okay. So my project is upgraded. And so I'll start Visual Studio Code. And as usual, we'll start here. Um, this says I have some outdated Dart extension. I'll just do get on that. I'll close this. And there we go. All right. So let's just start our application to see what we have so far. And while that's running, I'll minimize this here and sort of go and review our app a little bit. So here we have our app bar. We have the body, which we're not going to focus on right now. This is our fab. Remember, floating action button. And then we use this to say how it should be docked in that bottom navigator. And basically, it should have a cutout or a notch that is dictated by the shape. Okay, so that is all good. Um, let's see, let's minimize that. We don't really need that right now. But there is our scaffold. And as we saw from the documentation, what we can do is specify a drawer. Now, I'm going to let my application come up because I want to show you something. Now, the way we did our app bar, remember our app bar is this thing up at the top, is that our app bar, we have a title and we have leading and then we have action, right? So ignore center. There's really just three things for our app bar, leading, title, and then these actions. And actions were those widgets that are um, on the right hand side here. All right. So I'll close the action because that's just a list of widgets. And so I'll focus here on the leading. Now notice what our leading icon look like. It's just a menu and right now it doesn't do anything, which is fine. Um, that's how we set up most of our buttons and so on at the time. They're just placeholders. Well, our drawer it is just a property to our scaffold. So we can say drawer property and there's actually a drawer widget and we can just use that and we can save it. Now, once our project updates, which this already did, you can click this button and you should expect the drawer to come out. Now, the reason this doesn't work is because we put a leading icon here and overrode it and says that on press, it should do essentially nothing. So for now, I'll take this out and now I'll let our code update again and notice once it's finished, we still have a menu button there. So what's going on? Well, when you use the drawer property, if the drawer property is null, the scaffold widget is smart enough to say, oh, I know you wanna, you're you going to want to use that drawer, so I'll put a menu button for you, and I'll wire it up so that it, it activates or bring out that drawer. So we didn't have to actually put any code there in the lead-in to get this to work. Now, we could still programmatically open the drawer and I'll show you that a little bit later. So if we wanted to put back our code there, so for example, we change what this looks like instead of being this menu icon, which you probably should. Most people, um, when they see this, they're going to expect that when they click it, they should see a drawer come out. Now, the other thing you can do is besides using drawer, you can use end drawer and that just simply say, bring out the drawer on the right hand side instead of the left hand side. Great, we have a drawer, but it's empty, it doesn't show anything. So one of the things we can do is, drawer has a child property where we can put anything we like. So for example, we can put some text. And if we wait for our application to update, and then we click this button, now we can see this is my drawer. Now, the way you should probably use this is not to put some, and again, you can use any widget because it's just a child, any widget, but you should probably use something like a list view. And we haven't talked about list view yet. And the list view has children. And so it's a list of items. And one of the first items in your list view could be a drawer editor. And so we have that already as a widget. And this takes a child, which could be a text widget. And for example, we can say user detail. Let's say, for example, it's additional information we wanted to show. And so now, if you notice in our drawer, how that shows up differently. And we can add additional 
children to this um, list. And so, for example, we can add list tal, and these are going to be tals or the individual entries in our list view. And they too have uh, a title, um, which is a widget. And so this can be a text widget. And so we can say um, item one or thing one about the user, you know, for example, uh, user name. I don't know why we have user name here in the details, but maybe that's what we decide to do. That's where we're going to add um, information about the user, uh, maybe their email, right? And so on and so on and so forth. So this is one way in which you can populate your drawer. Okay, and since this is a list style, there are many other things you can do with your entries. So it doesn't have to be this boring. Of course, you can use rich text, you can use icons and so on. And so if you're curious, definitely check out the other properties of the list style. And you can see that you can do things like leading, which would put something before the text that you want, or trailing that puts something after, or you can do sub, which can put something below it. And of course, you can um, take action if someone was to click on that, if that's what you wanted to use it for. So I said that oh, there you can open the drawer programmatically. Let's say that, for example, we have this floating action button here. And we want that when we click the floating action button, instead of saying that, oh, oh fab was click, instead it opened our drawer. Let's say that's what we wanted. Well, the easiest way to do that, and I'm going to leave that there also, is I can say SCAFOLE scaffold that of, and basically I pass context. And basically what this does is it uses this constructor method to get the state of the scaffold in the tree. And it uses the current context and contexts are nested and inherited. And it basically goes up the, the tree looking for a scaffold widget, because that's what you're asking for and on the state of a scaffold widget, and then you can call the open drawer method. So that'll be one way in which you do it. Now I have to tell you that though, this is not going to work. And let me open this and show you why it's not going to work. And so if we go over there now and we click on this, what we get is an error message. And we can see that when we clicked on it, it says fab, fab was clicked, but it says that though, the following assertion was thrown while handling this gesture. And basically, scaffold of call with a context that does not contain a scaffold. Now, this at first might seem a little bit confusing and doesn't make any sense, but let's take a look at what's happening. Remember I said that when we say scaffold of, we're looking for the state or for a scaffold widget within this context and or within the tree. Now, where is this context coming from? This context was passed into the build method for our widget, right? For our own page widget. This widget is what returns a scaffold. So this context does not have a scaffold in it yet. What this context have is the material app within as a parent, right? The own page itself does not yet have a scaffold. So one easy and very, very, very easy way to fix this is simply to create a new widget and let's create a new stateless widget. For example, let's call it my fab for to represent my fab button here. And all I'm going to do is copy this, cut it out from here, bam. And I'm going to say that oh, we want to use my fab instead in this location. And what I want to return is a fab. All right. And so I put the fab action button here as its own widget and that allowed me to modify it and notice how everything looked exactly the same. But now because I'm returning another widget which has its own build method and therefore context, well, who's a parent of this fab? Well, the parent of this fab is a scaffold. So when I say look in the context that was passed to this fab, I do have a scaffold in the parent of this tree, and therefore I can call the open drawer. And so now when I click this button, you can see, there we go. Um, I can open the fab programmatically. So just keep that in mind. If you see that error message, just ask yourself the context that you're calling or you pass into this scaffold that of, does it, does it have a scaffold 
in the parent. And if it doesn't, and you see an error message like what we just saw, just pull it out as its own widget and problem solved. Okay, so I think that is enough. Hit that thumbs up button to show that how you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and spread the word if you can. Bye, have a great day.